right for the next talk of the week. Thank you, Gary. Hello, thank you very much. So this is my talk on mitigating Spectre CG using speculation variables in Linux markets. And this is a work as mentioned, and this is a joint work between the Friedrich Alexander University at Nuremberg and the Ruhr University Bochum. So what is the primary motivation for having mit mitigations against Spectre in EVPath? So at least to my knowledge, the primary motivation is having unprivileged application, uh, being able to use EVPath. So in upstream, there's the, some of the network traffic symbols which allow you to do that. Um, but there's also various other proposals, um, for example, using EVPath to chain together multiple um, IO Euring calls and using it to allow for more precise uh, system call filtering. Um, however, um, already pointed out in the original Spectre paper, um, EVPath enables Spectre attacks and uh, to mitigate this, um, the expressiveness of unprivileged EVPath had to be limited um, because some of the mitigations in the current upstream kernel reject um, EVPath programs that might contain Spectre actions. And in this talk, I'm going to present to you a prototype uh, which is called Verifend, Verifend uh, which enables more EVPath-based applications. Um, so first, we are going to have a look at the spectral variants that are relevant to EVPF. Uh, so first, we have spectral v2 uh, using the branch target buffer. And against this, EVPF uses the red screen mitigation, which is also used in the rest of the kernel. Uh, secondly, there's uh, spectral FDL. And against this, first, there was some, uh, some technique using move instructions uh, to mitigate it out to be uh, not sufficient and therefore currently uh, the kernel uses speculation variants as for example has sense uh, to mitigate the spectre FTL. And finally the spectre variant I'm also going to focus on in this talk is uh, spectre V1 or spectre PHV and against this the verifier uses index masking to prevent uh, map accesses from going out of bounds. Um, however this is not sufficient um, because for example you can also have Speculative type confusion, and to prevent this, uh, the verifier simulates uh, all the not only the architectural path to the program, but also the speculative path to it. And this means that, uh, for example, if you have some unsafe behavior on any of those speculative paths, uh, the program is rejected. And on the right, you can see how this happens. So we have the architectural states A and B. Um, which are also likely considered by the EVPF program developer. Um, but because the CPU may mispredict the branch from A to B, um, the verifier also has to consider the program state C, uh, which is speculative. And if we have any behavior on in this uh, program state, uh, which has not been considered by the program developer, uh, the program might be rejected. Uh, so the question is, of course, to which extent this actually affects real-world EVPF programs? And to answer this question, um, I've collected around uh, 360 project files uh, from various open source projects. Um, and I've grouped these into real application programs. Uh, so these are mostly from the BTC uh, project and uh, tags or example projects of uh, programs which are mostly with Linux self test and I've enabled the different spectre mitigations for these uh, programs. And as you can see, uh, both the spectre BTB and spectre FDL mitigations uh, do not cause any of those programs uh, to be rejected as expected. Um, but the spectre PHD mitigations cause around 30% of those programs to be rejected. And if you only look at the application programs, uh, it's even 50%. Now I'm going to present to you an approach to resolve this, which is called Verifend, which either fences off the unsafe behavior or verifies it. And to explain it to you, I'm going to go over a simplified example um, where we have a potential safety attack. Um, so we have some initialization, um, which either initializes a register um, based on some Boolean variable um, with a pointer or a number. And then we branch based on this Boolean variable, and we either execute the block E in which we dereference the register or we skip it. And for completeness, I've also added a um, array, the 
value that is read from the register can also use as an indice into an array which could, for example, accurately cover channel under spectrum. And on the right hand side, you can now see the architectural program stage states which are explored by the verifier for this program. So I executed the whole analysis of uh, the initial initialization. And uh, based on it, the verifier knows that the register either contains a pointer or a number. And on the left hand side, it then only has to explore um, the execution of block B if this pointer is true and if register contains a pointer. And then from B it goes to C. And on the right hand side, if register contains a number, um, it only has to simulate the execution of block C um, since the program will only ever branch to C if this pointer is false. So what happens if we now enable the machine mitigations? Um, so first on the left hand side, if register contains a pointer, um, the verifier now simulates the execution of block C after block A, even though um, this pointer is true. Um, however, this is not a problem for this program um, because in C we simply exit, so there's no unsafe behavior there. Um, the program occurs on the right hand side if register contains a number. And here the verifier now also simulates the execution of block C, even if this pointer is true. And then when it simulates the instruction which uh, C references the register, it encounters a type error because the register contains a number. And for this reason, the program is rejected by the default uh, verifier. And with VeriFence, I'm following a very simple approach to resolve this, which is to insert a fencing instruction whenever we encounter such unsafe behavior on a fence that is passed. So for this program, a fencing instruction would be inserted um, before the instruction that C references the register in block B, um, and therefore the speculation is terminated. Um, however, we do not have to insert a fencing instruction at the beginning of block C, because in C there is no unsafe behavior that has to be pre prevented. So I've implemented a prototype for this um, for Linux v615 in roughly 1,000 source line changes. And the majority of those uh, refactor the existing uh, checking code into a function uh, to allow for easy catching of the speculative verification errors. And based on this, whenever we encounter such an speculative error, we insert a barrier. And I've also separated the uh, no stake instruction in the, um, I've also uh, modified the no stake instruction in the eBPF bytecode, and I've separated it into a barrier against Spectre v4, v4 and Spectre v1. And this is required, or this is useful because, for example, on ARM, you do not need to um, lower the no stack v4 instructions because it implements firmware mitigations. And finally, to limit um, the complexity of the number of states that have to be explored by the verifier, we can treat uh, fencing instructions or no stack v1 instructions as program exits uh, whenever it encounters them on a quick exit path. Um, so therefore, the number of states that have to be explored is reduced. I'm now going to have a look at the evaluation, evaluation because the question is, of course, uh, what's the performance overhead of these uh, speculation barriers? And for this, um, I'm both going to look at real-world performance benchmarks, but we will first have a look at the motivating um, example um, and look at how many of those programs are now accepted into the program. So I have repeated the same experiment where I loaded those 360 programs into the kernel and analyze how many of them are rejected uh, with Verifence. And uh, the results are quite promising because only 15 test programs from the Linux test are still rejected. And looking at the specific reasons uh, for which those programs are rejected, uh, I found that they are either rejected because they are of the programs which are found perfect or very complex in order to exercise the Verify, or because they use variable stack accesses uh, for which the mitigations are currently not implemented. Um, so only looking at the um, application programs, um, the results are even better because before 50% of those were rejected and with every fence they are all accepted. Um, so this includes one program from Cilium, 
uh, come from the, the NOTS cluster, which uh, resemble real world programs, but also the programs uh, for which we will now have a look at the performance overhead, which are from the B2C project where I use the libgpl trace based clusters, um, the part continuous profiler, and the log KV network load balancer. So we'll first have a look at the number of speculation variables that are inserted into those programs. And on the right hand side, you can see those uh, three specific programs which are selected for the um, analysis of the presentation. Um, but in the report, you can also find uh, the results for all the 360 programs. And on average, um, the existing upstream specter SDL mitigations um, insert 1% of sensing instructions roughly over all, the, all of those programs. And if we, in addition, um, enable the Spectre PHP mitigations using Verisense, uh, this number rises to 1.8% on x86. And on the right hand side, you can see, as mentioned, three specific programs. Uh, and I picked the GCC of CPU temperature because it has the largest overhead for the applications. Um, I was running the partial continuous profiler at a very high uh, sampling frequency in order to leverage the maximum overhead. And then the log KV SCP program uh, for which the checksum calculation is performed in EVKS. And as you can see, um, the vast majority of speculation variables is usually inserted due to Spectre SDL. Um, but for example, um, for log CLV, we also have a significant portion of speculation variables that are inserted uh, due to Verisense. So first we will have a look at the execution time overhead for those three programs. And for all of the libgpl based GCC clusters, in which roughly 50% of those were all rejected without Verisense, I was not able to measure any overhead for EVPS execution time. Um, for the partial continuous profiler, um, the overhead due to Verisense is roughly 60%. So that takes roughly 8 microseconds instead of 5. And finally, for the LogKLB SCP um, program, um, first we noticed that this program is relatively, relatively long running, so it takes around 250 to 300 microseconds. And here we have the largest absolute overhead due to this condition. Uh, due to this to the uh, very sense mitigation, uh, which is roughly 50 microseconds. So the question is, of course, um, how do these increases in eBPS execution time also affect the application? And to analyze this, I have been running the tracers and also the park continuous profiler alongside a memcached workload. And um, here we find that um, for the BCC tracers, as expected, there is no measurable impact on the memcached workload. Uh, for the Parker continuous profiler, when I was running it at this very large frequency of 2 kilohertz, and there's a small um, increase in throughput and measurable of roughly 1%. But if you're running it at, for example, 50 megahertz, which would be more suitable for continuous profiling, or even 1,000 megahertz, um, I was not able, 1,000 hertz, I was not able to um, find any difference uh, for the workload. And then finally, for the log KV SCT, SCTP program, uh, I was able to measure a 14% decrease in throughput. Uh, but one important thing here is to notice that I did not disable the checksum calculation, which was actually suggested by the maintainer of the load balancer. Um, because as you can see here, um, the throughput for SCTP with log KV very low, so it's only 150 megahertz. And with TCP, I was getting uh, 10 gigabits of throughput, and there the overhead due to the uh, very sense mitigation uh, was also only 1 to 2 percent. So finally, I'm going to have a few remarks regarding future work. Um, so a few of the optimizations that could still be done to very sense in order to improve the performance. Um, the number of barriers could certainly be optimized further. Um, so Verisense does not make any effort currently in order to limit the number of uh, speculation barriers to one per basic block, which is the most that you require. Um, and also, um, one simple 
here how this could be implemented easily is to always insert the speculation variance at the beginning of the proof. And secondly, um, in order to reduce the number of barriers that are inserted due to the specter at scale mitigation, you could apply the same approach of either trying to verify whether the program is safe after a core instruction or uh, just inserting a fencing instruction. And this could be quite promising because uh, looking at some of those programs, the specter at scale barriers, uh, they often occur at the beginning of the program in a block when the step is initialized, uh, which is one of the cases where we have a critical flaw that has to be fenced off. And um, therefore, this could be reduced. Uh, the fact that PhD barriers due to that, and they are often more scattered throughout the program, which might also be able to explain um, why they seem to have a higher relative performance impact, even though they are not that much more in number than the fact that SDL barriers. Um, secondly, instead of using barriers, what could likely Im improve the performance a lot was, would be to use um, something similar to speculative load hardening in order to poison the speculation. Um, there are some questions, of course, uh, whether this can be implemented easily for eBPF in a portable way and whether you have the register available to implement it. Finally, um, the behaviors that are currently allowed during speculation are the same behaviors that are also allowed during architecture execution. Um, however, this is not required. There are many behaviors which can be performed safely under speculation, and they would simply cause the speculation to be um, aborted. So um, there we could also allow more behaviors and therefore, therefore um, reduce the number of barriers that are inserted. Um, the problem with this approach is, of course, that um, you would introduce a lot of more checks that check whether in the verifier are we currently verifying a speculative part? And if uh, we can allow this specific behavior, for example, a null pointer dereference, otherwise we have to prevent it. So finally, I also wanted to get back to the uh, to the motivation. So as mentioned, uh, the primary motivation for check mitigations for EBPF seems to be um, unprivileged EBPF. However, even if you have complete spectral mitigations for BPF, which do not restrict the programs as heavily as they are currently restricted, um, you still have the issue that you can have bugs in the verifier, and these could easily lead to um, primary exploits. So one, we have, of course, seen many um, approaches to resolve this here already. So, for example, applying formal methods to the verifier. Um, the other approach we have seen is to sandbox the EBPF execution. Maybe this could only be limited to unprivileged programs. Um, I think especially memory layout is a challenge here because many of those approaches make quite significant changes to the way data has to be allocated for EBPF. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, however, is that at least, at least according to Intel, memory protection keys uh, could still protect you under speculation. So maybe that's something promising. And finally, uh, maybe we could also like limit, not really change the kernels, but instead have like, a more restricted language from which the eBPF programs are compiled, and only if they were compiled from this more restricted language, which also has text like as a secondary barrier um, for um, memory safety and type safety, um, only then they could be injected by some privileged service into the kernel. And finally, um, because I was not able to find any cases of this online, um, although it certainly seems possible, at least in theory, um, have you been aware of any spectre guesses which ended up by a mistake in privilege programs? So if this is still the case, then this would be a secondary motivation for the work. So finally, just a quick summary. Um, you can find both the um, source code for the evaluation script, the raw data, and the um, kernel patches online on our JITLAB. And uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions.
make this slightly modified to uh, verify and uh, accept the change. Yes, it will end up like it. Um, I, I did not implement this for all the architectures, but I made the changes to the script and added a to do set. You would have the instructions there. I did not put in the word search out the speculation variables for all the architectures there. To understand a bit more when you said that programs get rejected because it takes like two of the time to work. If you probably did something to make them do it in the first place, then you could have explained them a bit more. Yeah, exactly. So, um, the reason these are rejected is because currently there's not a large set of unprivileged programs which you could use to evaluate the rejections. And I think this idea was uh, stolen from some patch from Daniel. Uh, where they also use uh, privileged programs and enable the expected mitigations for them, to analyze how the mitigations would likely affect future unprivileged programs. So that's the idea of that approach. Thanks very much. I was uh, wondering, you mentioned earlier in the beginning that you used the mapping for the no spec if you like use foreign and foreign targets. And could you uh, just give performance analysis of the answers before it, or uh, No, I've not done any performance analysis. I, it was a change that was relatively simple to implement, um, but yeah, maybe the performance benefit of R is not really worth it. And what could also be the case is that if you decide to just keep one no spec instruction, then you could also like use the V4 instructions as barriers for the um, analysis of the speculative parts, and therefore, like the maybe limit the um, overhead of verifying the programs more. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.